35. Right? If it wants to, it should be perfect. It should be nice. That's right. Every finish. Um, I don't know which counts first. So, page 135. Yep. Perik Sha'asar, chapter 19, Rebbe Elias the Demila. The loss of Hector Kheta Shabbat, but one who. You got it? 135. Yeah. We're talking about the uh, hermaphrodite. Oh, yes. Hermaphrodite. Androgens. Androgen. Right. That's the word actually used in common. Yes. And also questionable, uh, doubtful cases, um, which might be prem, for, for example, where maybe uh, at seven, at eight days, whether it's maybe, I think, was that the idea of the doubtful one? When it was. I mean, that, that could be in the mm. And of course, you also have the ones who are born without a foreskin. And one of the points he made, which I read yesterday, was that the sages said that the child had a foreskin, but it wasn't visible. Uh, and, and that's why they had to draw blood. Um, and Steinsel, on the side of it, says that that is in the medical field. It is a visible, but it isn't visible. But it isn't visible. It isn't visible. It's not the child's meat. That's very interesting. The loss of fact of Che et Shabbat, but one who is questionable does not override Shabbat. So, um, you know, you do a Brit Milan on Shabbat, right? Um, but if there's a question hanging over it, then, then uh, as it says here, it doesn't override Shabbat. Or la dokha et Shabbat. So the foreskin of one who is certain overrides Shabbat. Velo androgynos dokha et Shabbat. But an antigen does not does not override Shabbat. Rabbi Yehuda Omer androgynos doche Shabbat. So Rabbi Yehuda says that the hermaphrodite does override Shabbat. Vanush karet. And ah, an uncircumcised hermaphrodite is punished with karet. When he reaches maturity. When he reaches the daughter. Which would be when you're 13. Right. So, he should have it done by the time he's 13. Okay. Or la tova dai dochai to Shabbat. A foreskin of one who is certain over Shabbat. The lona la ben hashmashot dochai to Shabbat. But one who was born during ben hashmashot twilight does not override Shabbat. That's interesting. Uh, what does it say? This is a question whether twilight is part of the outgoing or the incoming day. One born during twilight on Friday may not be circumcised on the next Shabbat day. Perhaps, or perhaps he was born on Friday and the following Shabbat, right. Shabbat, Shabbat is in fact the ninth day after the birth. Or la day dochai to Shabbat, the false of one who is certain over Shabbat, the lona la teshehu mahul dochai to Shabbat, but one who was born Circumcised does not override Shabbat. Shabbat Shammai Omrim, Tarifai Hatif, Mimeno Dambrit. Shabbat Shammai said one must cause the covenantal blood, is that the way you've got it? Yes. Um, to flow from a naturally circumcised infant. So. Well, Beit Hillel Omrim and Nasrif. Well, Beit Hillel says it's not necessary. So Beit Hillel says you don't have to make blood flow. Beit Shammai says you do have to make blood flow. Is that correct? No, no, no. Beit Shammai says you have to make blood flow. Yeah. And Beit Hillel says you don't. It's not necessary. Oh, it's not necessary. That's different, isn't it? Because the child's already circumcised. Naturally, he's born naturally circumcised. Yes. Has there been discussion about that previous, about naturally circumcised? And naturally... Well, the halakha here, 
uh, and of the same way. The halakha is if a child is born circumcised, even though he is circumcised at the age of eight days, his circumcision does not overrun the I don't know what that means. So it's a, a suffix, and we know that a doubtful one doesn't override Shabbat. Right. And the background note says, so occasionally a baby is born without foreskin. This is caused by the degeneration of the foreskin, and in this respect, the medical assessment would agree with the view expressed in the denial that one born circumcised has a type that can cure. Yeah, but not having born without a foreskin, a foreskin is not the same as being naturally circumcised. That's a, that's a good one. Born without a cir- born without a foreskin, a child born without a foreskin, it's not the same as being naturally circumcised. Well, a cup of coffee, eh, then? By saying naturally circumcised, you're, you're inferring that there is the there's the the ritual of grit is being performed. Yes, I, I think it would would have been better to say born without a foreskin. Yeah, that's right. very interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, okay. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, lo nechlechu beit shamay u beit yilal al nolay b'shuhu k'shuhu m'achu. Yeah. It's put in the Gemara. It's born circumcised. It's just a technical word. So born circumcised is the same as born without a circum, without a foreskin. It's just a word. Did it say that? No, I'm just suggesting. Circumcised and born without a must be two different things. Because you still need to do, you still need to have a flow of blood. That's part of circumcision. Yeah. To draw the blood. But there won't be a force to do it. There will be some other part of it. Maybe it'll discuss it. So, lo nechlechol beit shemay uvechilal al nolat keshul mahu. Beit shemay uvechilal did not disagree over one who was born circumcised. She tzarif lehatif mimino dambris. They agree one must cause covenants of blood to flow from the infant. Ah, oh, that's see now that's interesting because now it says circumcised. So the covenants of blood dambris is not the same as born circumcised. Because it is uh, a suppressed foreskin. Because they agree that it is a case of concealed foreskin. The child is not actually circumcised, it is just that his foreskin is not visible. So that's why he was here. His explanation. Uh, what do they disagree about? Al ger shnit gayer keshehumahu. A convert who converted when he was already circumcised. Shevet shamay omrim tarit lehatif mimenu dam brit. So they shamay say one must cause covenant of blood to flow from such a convert. Or they tell him omrim ain't tarit lehatif mimenu dam brit. It's not necessary. Oh, yeah, it says that. That's what you have. Very good. So, sorry, Paul, going down, I'm, and I'm sorry I've missed the last day, no. but they're saying that covenantal blood, that the, um, that is the eka of, of the brick. It's not, it's, it's one, one of one the, of it's one of them. But a, a, a brick can't take place, can't, can't truly said to have taken place if the covenantal blood hasn't been. I would say almost certainly. I don't know the halakha, but I'd say almost certainly. Although, based on this, you can see it says, Beit Shammai says you need it, and Beit Halal says you don't need it. Yeah. And it's unlikely with a convert who was pre-circumcised that he went to they took blood. Exactly. Yeah. There's some more halakha. Do you want to read? Is there something related to that? From one who was born circumcised, it was necessary to get up an end for blood. When a baby is born circumcised, the circumcision involves dripping covenantal blood from it. This must be performed very carefully to avoid endangering it. Based on the incident involving Rav Adaba Haba and the statement of Rabbi Shimon, so we will obviously come to something here. The Gentile who converted when he was already circumcised 
When a circumcised Gentile converts to Judaism, a drop of covenantal blood is drawn from him. Then he immerses in a ritual bath, as ruled by the Gaonim. Uh, then, several authorities, some dispute this ruling. There are many opinions with regard to the rationale for this ruling. Some comments please explain that based on the ruling of the later authorities, the halakha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer HaKatar, that one must drip covenantal blood from a circumcised convert. Other authorities explain to us based on the ruling in Yavamot, the drop of covenantal blood is drawn from a circumcised convert. So it seems the halakha is to do it. Yes. Okay. So we should, um... I'll we'll ask uh, Moyle next time we see him. Oh, you know, any Moyle? Is there a Moyle? Is there a Moyle in there? Let's <laughs> ask one of the women. <laughs> be careful, you might, you might be upset at the answer. Okay. I'm a sure. With what? No, that's the number plate. <laughs> I'm a C R K D D K. <laughs> P R K A D K, you know. Yeah, okay. the rest of the imagination. P R K A D K. Very good. Amama, in the loss of your Pesach Shabbat, one who is questionable doesn't know Rosh Hashanah. La Atuye Mai. So, what does this include? La Atuye Hadikanu Rabbanan includes this with the Rabbi's Torah in a Brayta. Ben Shiva Mechalu in Alav Et Hashabbat. We violate Shabbat for a child. In the seventh month of pregnancy, aha, so prem, uven shmona in machalina lave tashabat, we don't violate the Shabbat for a child born in the eighth month. What? As it is right, we should live. So, seven months later, you can like to get the So, you can get the circumcision in as quickly as you can. Is that right? You get the circumcision. Before it before it, it dies, no, before the, the likelihood of the dying because he was born prim. So no, you're saying the circumcision is a halakhically uncertain portion of this, not over a Shabbat. The Gemara asks, what case of uncertainty does this statement come to include? Yeah. The Gemara answers, it comes to include that which the sage has taught. The circumcised child born after seven months of pregnancy, one desecrates Shabbat. As it will likely live. However, to circumcise a child born after eight months of pregnancy with regard to whom the presumption was that he would not survive, one may not get the fact that a seven month baby is more likely to survive than an eight I don't month think that's what they're saying. I think they're saying that if it's a seven month tr- seven month trend, a seven month baby, and that baby you can tell, oh yeah, it's fine it's likely to survive, you'll do it. But if it's an eight month baby and you say you look at the baby and say that five baby is not viable, then you don't desecrate okay. So I think it's it sounds like right. it's I think yeah, there's, there's a point down here which a child born during the eight months is regarded as a corpse. And there is no much to the circumcise them. We do not desecrate the, the Shabbat for the sake of the circumcision. And although the malata of slaughtering cannot be form, performed on a corpse, the Shabbat, the Shabbat that the Shabbat refers to here is no, that's, that's not it. No. I would have thought that, I would have thought other opposite to you, Paul, that a, a child born with seven months is yeah, likely to be less likely to. Yeah, that's the way we would look at it. But I'm just trying to find something logical in what they're saying. There's a background note here. Go ahead. During Talmudic times, conventional wisdom was that a child born after eight months of pregnancy had no chance of survival, while a child born after seven months was more likely to survive. Oh, that's an ancient wisdom. In modern medicine, there is no support for this distinction. Yet in fact, it's a sage's rule that the determination is not based on the counting of the months of pregnancy. With regard to the physical side of the world, i.e. the nails and hair are used to determine whether or not a child is potentially alive. Is that what I'm saying? It seems to be. What does this tell us I'm saying? But, but that, refu- that argument refutes itself. They're saying that they're, they're delineating seventh month and eighth month, but then saying that 
that the, the, the term is not determined by the time, but by the physical attributes of the of the baby. Where they're fully developed. Yeah. By, he- by males and what have you. So it's almost sh- shooting itself in a, in, the, well, in, a, in a way. I think it indicates an uncertain state of medical knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, you, you could say, I mean, just thinking of something, you, you could say that a child with a leg is at seven months is obviously so strong that it's immersed at seven months. Not necessarily. No, no, I'm just saying. No, this is like their ancient wisdom. What may have what was going on there. So this child has come out because it's there. Because of where okay. one that comes out. Needs as much time as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. that maybe their idea of seven, eight, and nine months is different to our idea of a nine-month pregnancy. And maybe then, then our nine months today is what they count as seven months. And that, They would know, it, it would have been knowledge that if the period had have stopped. The period stopped. Um, but see, this is what I'm saying. If they maybe count, like maybe, the, 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 let's, let's say a woman doesn't have the period, right? And they say, well, let's, it's, you know, it could be anything. We'll see. And then the next month, it doesn't happen again. And they say, then I've got to be pregnant. So then they start the counting. Which is already two which months would, in the which, which, which would make it seven months. months. Now, the only thing I'm wondering is whether if you have a, a baby that is born at eight or nine months, no, is that possible? I don't subscribe to that. If they were loose women, and then that, that, that may, there may be a doubt as to whether it was them or was it right? That's also a possibility. But I think that's the reason. Babies are the ones that are being stored in the open. Yeah. And they come out all the time and take you and find out. So, what is this um, halakahi? Do you know what they do? One may disagree with the stage of life of a baby born after seven months of pregnancy. If the eighth day after his birth occurs on Shabbat, he is circumcised on Shabbat. However, it is assumed that a baby born after eight months... This is the seventh month? Seventh month baby? However, it is assumed that a baby born after eight months cannot survive. Therefore, one may not move the baby on Shabbat. One may not desecrate Shabbat to save its life. And if the eighth day after his birth occurs on Shabbat, he is not circumcised on Shabbat. This rule refers to a baby whose hair and nails are not fully developed. So it's all about the appearance, about the physical appearance, the appearance, appearance, the appearance, the appearance yeah. the time, rather than the time. That's right. what it is. Both. If the baby is fully developed, then Shabbat is desecrated on his behalf, as it is to any other child. That's the Rambam. Can we... Are we, we alright if we can hear about this? Uh, I'm interested in that and that. Uh, it, it is necessary to drip covenantal blood. I found the discussion of halakhotic circumcision appears in Sakhot of Amat, including the discussion concerning the halakhotic circumcision of the convert. The early and late commentaries <coughs> debated when the essence of the mitzvah of circumcision is for the person to remain without a coarse skin or whether the essence of the mitzvah is to perform the act of circumcision itself. Preparing for dripping blood from the child without a coarse skin is a form of circumcision and fulfills the mitzvah. Nevertheless, the authorities dispute whether or not the blessing is decided and is attacked. With regard to converts, however, the consensus appears to be that the central act of conversion is the immersion of the ritual party for the sake of conversion. Wow. Up a Which part? I wish I could. Hi, Johnny. Okay. Born after. 
about this club? Oh, is it? Oh, yes. I saw you a couple of months ago in, um, in what's the name of the, uh, the Shakari? I was with Peter Rosenthal. No, yeah. I was jumping in front of you with Peter Rosenthal. Rosenthal. I only got the Shakari. Yeah, he was he jumping in front in front of you for Shakari. I remember all old memories, but the new ones are gone. Mary is your daughter. Mary is your daughter. Who are you? Visa. I used to go to a dance on my own. Okay. No, no. Well, there was no connection. There was no connection. A dance on that should come well. But there's no issue. We got power. The rest you will know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my sister belongs to your son of law show. Yes. Which, what's yeah. your sister? What's uh, Pollock. The Pollock family. Yeah. They passed yeah. away now. Yeah, Ron's mother. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it oh. Oh, the forest? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Ron's wife is my sister. Oh, okay. And I remember. Were well, you the swimming pool or something? <laughs> I used to teach Mary at Mariah. Uh, Please give her my regards. What's your name? Please give, please give, uh, I used to live in Sydney. You're, you're friends with, uh, you're with the goal, with uh, the late Sam and Susie Gold. That's the year from this week. Please give Mary my hand. There he goes. He's a man of legend. Small world. <laughs> and getting smaller. I just walked in. What are you doing in Melbourne? They have a my mouth and she's oh, no. the biggest upholsters order. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm going to tell you a nice story about your grandfather. I was a captain of your well, I was a grandfather came to Sydney and he had a smash the first week in English. He had a smash. So he started to scream to the non-English boy. I'm going to call him. Um, let's keep going. Did your name ever used to be anything else? No. Did your name ever used to be Bookman? Okay, born after eight months. The state of the Gemara cited sources that allude to the notion that a child born after eight months of pregnancy cannot survive. Nevertheless, they provided clear physical signs that indicate whether or not a child is fully developed. In later generations, the authorities ruled the halachot with regard to a child born after eight months. So it says there that the, it says it's the sign, yes. clear physical sign. It indicates child is not fully developed. Uh -huh. In later generations, the authorities ruled the halachot with regard to a child born after eight months apply only if there is absolute certainty that the child was indeed born after eight months. Some authorities state that since we lack the expertise to identify the physical signs described by the sages, these halophones cannot be applied. <laughs> Rather, every newborn is treated equally. He is circumcised even on Shabbat. All of his needs are met, and Shabbat is desecrated with saved. Hooray! Yay! Okay. Sanity rules. Um. Oh, and we'll get to the incident of Rav Adha Ba Ahava. Well, that might be next week, by the way, by the way we're going. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry? Thanks. Okay. Ben Shmona Harehu Ke'evin. A child of eight months is like a stone. The Asur Letaltala. And it's forbidden to move him. Aval imo shocha u meni However, his mother may bend over him and nurse him. Because of the danger. I reckon it's a overdue chart like a. Yeah, which is still eight months. So therefore, it goes back to your. It's a, it's a massive baby. Uh, and uh, and the, the timing is out. Okay. It's interesting that the child's monster. Mm. Even inside the room. Because it's 
They say it's like a stone. This mark. So you can see them bend over the child, I assume, and dangle the people into the ground. At any time during this, have they said nine months? No. I don't recall. No, they haven't. But could you just go back and explain why why the child is considered a mister? Like a stone. It's related to that, yeah. Okay. The the intern just comes from the Mishnah, which talks about um, whether we can, uh, whether Mila, Rit Mila, overrides Shabbat. That's the discussion. Itmar, it was stated, Rav Amar Halachaka Tanakama. Uh, Rav said the law of course the Tanakama, which is Beit Hillel's opinion. Ushmal Amar Halachaka Rabbi Shimon ben Nawazar. Rav Ada Barachava it it lead it lead it lead lay ahu yenuka kishehu mahu. A second such child was born to Rav Ada Barachava. Ahadre atleta mechola mechola a. Rav Ada went around to thirteen circumcisers. And it's the Shave Karut Shaka until he had to go and do it himself and he rendered his son genitally mutilated. Yeah, you really? But he couldn't find a, 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 a moil, so he had to do it himself and in the process he, he um, mutilated the kid. cut off too much. Amar, Rav Ara said to his colleagues, Te Li, or Te Ti Li, the Avri. Adrav, this tragedy is coming to me, for I transgressed uh, Rav's ruling, Amar le Rav Nachman, that Adishmuel lo Avar. And did, uh, didn't you also transgress the ruling of Shmuel? Amar, the Amar Shmuel Bechol, because one could say that Shmuel stated with regard to a weekday, the Shabbat, mi Amar, with regard to Shabbat, did he, Shabbat, did he state it? So what's that about, Peter? Well, I could go back to the beginning of it. Because now I relate to that Adaba Ahava. There was a child that was born circumcised. And the time of the circumcision was on Shabbat. He inquired after 13 ritual circumcisors. But they refused to circumcise him. Until ultimately he circumcised the child himself. And rendered him one with a set of relief he did not know how to perform a circumcision and made too deep an incision. Rav Adaba Ahava said, I have it coming to me. I, I deserve to be punished as I violated the ruling of Rav. Okay. The rule that one born circumcised does not even need covenantal blood. And then Rav Nachman said to him, yeah. And he did not violate the ruling of Shmuel. Uh, he did not really, uh, violate the ruling of Shmuel, question mark. Say that Shmuel said that one is required to drink covenantal blood during the week on Shabbat. Did he say so? Certainly one does not desecrate Shabbat in that case. The man explains to us, Adaba Ahava held differently, that in that case there is not merely a concern that perhaps there is a concealed horseman. In that case, that there is definitely a concealed horseman. Hey, I think you've gone too. Yes. Have you gone too far? Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Yes, a little footnote. Go on. This incident. The incident. This incident is related to some, in somewhat greater detail in the Jerusalem Talmud, which cites divergent traditions with regard to the details of the incident. Some say that in his ignorance, have had a fatally wounded the child, while others say that after he saw what he had done to him, Knowing that a male whose tubes have been set and cannot have children and is even prohibited to marry a Jew, Rav Ada prayed for mercy that the child should die of his own. Um, <laughs> by the way, Tosafot says, um, Tosafot citing the reed, rule that nowadays any infant may be moved since we are no longer expert in determining the fetal birth month. 
furthermore, contain three, even when we're in eight infant eight months stage of insertion, the infant may nonetheless be moved and circumcised on Shabbat so long as he exhibits no sign of immature hair and nail formation. And the re follows the opinion of Rebbe, who rules in Yevamot, that a baby born in the eighth month with mature hair and nail formation is actually a seven month baby that remained in the womb longer than necessary. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's keep going, yeah? Kusavad Rajai or Allah Ravada held, um, it is definitely a suppressed foreskin. Uh, so what the question is, why didn't they want to, why didn't these thirteen want to circumcise him? Was it because he was already born circumcised or was it because he was an eight eight month baby and they refused to do it? Ravada held it was a suppressed foreskin. The itma, oh, that's why he cut. He cut into it. He cut into it. Oh, he, he wanted to draw blood and went too too far. The itma, it was stated. Rabba, uh, uh, Rabama. <laughs> Thank goodness. This would have been perfect. That makes sense. Those pages. We're concerned that perhaps it's suppressed for him. Rav Yosef Amar, Vadai or Lakavushahi. Meaning that it's definitely a suppressed for him. So they're saying with a suppressed for him, you even draw blood on Shabbat. Amar Rav Yosef Mana Minala. Rav Yosef said, "From where do I say this?" The Tanya was sort of brighter. Rabbi Leizer Hakapar Omer, Hakapar, sorry, Omer. Lo nechlekol be Shamay or be Tilel al Nolad Keshevu Mahul. Be Shamay be Tilel do not disagree over one who was born circumcised. Shetarich lehatif mimeno dam bris that one must cause covenant of blood to flow for him. Alma. What do they disagree about? The Chalel alav et haShabbat. To desecrate the Shabbat for the child by doing it on Shabbat. Beit Shammai omrim mechalin alav et haShabbat. Beit Shammai says we desecrate Shabbat for it. Or Beit Hillel omrim in mechalin alav et haShabbat. So Beit Hillel says we don't desecrate Shabbat for this. Lav miklal tanak the tanakama sava mechalin alav et haShabbat. So doesn't it follow by implication that the tanakama holds that we desecrate Shabbat for the infant? But perhaps the Tanakama stated uh, the opinion of all, we do not desecrate. In ten, if this is so, Rabbi Eliezer Kapar, Tama Debe, Shamay, Atta, La Ashminan. Is Rabbi Eliezer Kapar coming to teach us the opinion of Be Shamay? It couldn't be. Your Mahati Kamar, perhaps Rabbi Eliezer Kapar said, said that. Lo nechlekol beis shamay or beis hillel v'adavazeh beis shamay and beis hillel never disagreed on this issue. Amar Rabbi Asi, Koshe imo me'ali leda, any uh, newborn whose mother becomes becomes tame due to due to childbirth, nimol lishmana is circumcised on the eighth day. What does that mean? Or anyone rendered tonight, come by the birth of a child. 30 days, I think it's 30 days for a boy. Ah, it says here, cesarean section. Ah. And then possibly 
a non-Jewish woman who gave birth and then converted. She gave birth. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so, v'chol she'eni mod me'ah leja, and any uh, whose mother does not become shami due to trouble, any molish mona, is not circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, but rather on the first day. Woman birth should be in four seven days, that's what that means. And on the eighth day, the session is brought to the circumcised. So she can short the seven days, and on the eighth day, she can handle the child and get involved. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting. Can a minor... Can a minor, can an infant, non-Jewish child, become Jewish? They, they do. Uh, an infant. You see what it's saying? It's saying that if the child was born not Jewish, mm. and then, I don't know, then the parents wanted it to become I, Jewish. I can tell you how it's done. You see the, the issue? No. The, the child born non-Jewish, yes. then let's say that you'll explain, but the, the parents say we want the child to be Jewish, then it therefore follows that it should be circumcised somewhere inside the eight days, yep. before it gets to the eight days, because it wasn't Jewish to begin with. So it should be done immediately. Sorry, what were you saying, Peter? I know the technique for... Uh, the young children, the the female child, the parent takes the child into the mother, but the father says that the child is done. Ah, fascinating. Okay. Shinemar, Ishaq, Kitazria, Vialta, Zakhar, Vitamar, Vigomer. Over Yom Hashmini, you mold the Saralata. When a woman conceives and gives birth to a male, she shall be Tamay. And on the eighth day, the flesh of his costume shall be circumcised. Amar Leah Baye, Dorot Tarishonim Yaksiku, the early generations uh, should demonstrate. Sha'ini Motsmea Leza, since the newborn's mother did not become due to childbirth, Bini Mold Lishmona, and he was circumcised on the eighth day. Amalei, Tetra Abaye, Nitna Torah, when the Torah was given, Vinitka Shahalaka, a new law went into effect. The eighth day rule for a child whose mother becomes Tamay at birth. Ah, okay. So the eight days is only where it's a Jewish mother. Because obviously, Oh, and it's not, and it's not related to a mother who gives birth by cesarean section. No. Wow. Eni, is this in fact true? The Haid Mar, uh, it was stated, Yotzed Ofen Umisha Yeshlosh or Alot, a child born by cesarean section or one that has two foreskins. That's interesting. Um, one growing on top of another. Rav Huna Barav Chia Barav. We violate Shabbos for him, to circumcise him. Mechanama in Mechalim. One said we don't violate Shabbat for this. I can lawfully go Ella lechalel alav et Shabbat. They argue only so far as whether we violate Shabbat for him. Aval lishmona v'day mechalinan le. But we certainly circumcise him on the eighth day. Okay. So we still circumcise him on the eighth day, regardless. Ha bahatalya. This right, but it's saying they still do it on the eighth day. Ha bahatalya. This law, uh, circumcision on Shabbat, is dependent on that law, circumcision on the eighth day. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's that like that that line is like 20 pages. 
וזה תסביר מה תנאים. יש לי בית שאני מולה אחד, there is a slave born in the house who is circumcised on the first day. Oh, so this in regard to Canaanite slaves. A home-born child of a Canaanite nation. Circumcised on the first day, because they're not Jewish. But yes, you live by Shenimah Lishmana, and there is a slave born in the house who is circumcised in, on the eighth day. Yes, uh, Miknat Ketesh. Canaanite Jews, they're a slave, Uh, there were Jewish elements to them. We've yeah. talked about it actually. Yeah. Like what they can and can't do on Shabbat, I think. Yeah. Um, there, is a, uh, there is a slave purchased with money who is circumcised on the first day. And there is a slave purchased with money who is circumcised on the eighth day. There is a slave purchased with money who is circumcised on the first day, and there is a slave purchased with money who is circumcised on the eighth day. Ketzad, how is this? Lakach shifcha me'uberet ve'achar kach yalda. If one brought a pregnant slave woman and she later gave birth, zehu miknat ketzep hanimol lishmana. This is a slave purchased with money who is circumcised on the eighth day. So she was purchased when she was already pregnant. Yes. Okay. I think it's the purchase along with the name. Very interesting. Yes. Lakach shivcha ima, but a, a, a slave woman and her child along with her, ah, so the child was already born, and the child had to come with her, zohi miknat ketev shinimolechad. This is the purchase with money who is circumcised on the first day, meaning the child might be five years old, or two years old, first day of ownership, you do it. And of course you acquire the body of the child survives by the way. You <laughs> acquire two slaves. So the price is what? Bargain. The yesh ye lid bait shenimo lishmana ketad, and there is a slave born in the house who is circumcised on the other day how ketad. La kach shicha vini tabra et slavi alda. If I'm brought bought a slave woman and she became pregnant while in his possession and then gave birth Zehu Yelid Bay Abait Sheni Molishma. So that's an eight day circumcision. Rav Chama Omer Yalte Vahaka Titvila, she gave birth and then the master later immersed her for the purpose of rendering her a Canaanite slave woman. For a non-Jew to acquire the status of a Canaanite slave and a quasi-Jewish status to which this class is subject, he or she must undergo a conversion process similar to that of an ordinary convert. As part of this process, he or she must be immersed in a mikvah under the owner's direction. Wow. So, she... She was purchased she gave birth and then so when she was purchased she wasn't pregnant and he hadn't immersed her yet and then she gave birth that so that child is a first day second six right so hang on the immersion was after she gave birth. Oh, and then she gave birth, and then he immersed her. Right. Zehu Yelid Bait Sheni Molechad. This is um, a slave born in the house who is circumcised on the first day. Hitbula Vaha Kach Yalda. If he immersed her in a mikvah, in a mikvah, and she later gave birth, Zehu Yelid Bait Hani Molishmana. This is born in the house who is circumcised on the eighth day. So, okay. It all makes sense. But Tanakama, so uh, what does the Tanakama say about this? Lo Shanele, there's no difference to him. Then he's below of Afakachyalda, where the master immersed the slave woman. And she gave birth later, 
בין ילדה ואחר כך גידולה ולשגיא בסס ומראו לילה ומסר דאף על גב דאין אמו תמי הלידה ואולדוי the child's mother is not tamay due to childbirth because she wasn't tamay because she wasn't Jewish she is not obligated in this class right for he is circumcised on the eighth day so that's what the Tanakhama said Amar Rava Bishlam Allah Rav Kama Rava said now according to Rav Kama this is understandable Mishkachat La Yelit Bayit Nimol Echad a case can be found for a slave born in the house where it's circumcised on the first day, Yelid Beit Nimol Lishmana, and a slave born in the house is circumcised on the eighth day, Miknas Kesef Nimol Echad, and similarly, a slave purchased with money circumcised on the first day, or Miknas Kesef Nimol Lishmana, and a slave purchased with money circumcised on the eighth day. These are the cases, even though it makes no difference to us in mo- this modern day and age. Yalta. <laughs> Yalta. Um, and when the Mashiach comes, oh, they all bow down to thank, us. Peter, thank you so much for clarifying that. <laughs> That's really important. Thank you. You should come to this. He's coming any minute. Okay. This Shabbat. The elder of a a slave woman, gave birth. Uh, a slave woman gave birth, and then later immersed her in a mikvah. This is born in the house who is circumcised on the first day. That makes sense, because he wasn't Jewish. If he immersed her and she gave birth later, she's Jewish. We get that. Uh, she was purchased with money. Uh, who is circumcised now, where she's purchased with money and circumcised, the baby circumcised on the eighth day. In a case where the master purchased a pregnant slave woman and immersed her, and she later gave birth, Miknat Kesef Nimolechat. So, hang on, that was where it was an eight day circumcision, yeah. which is fine because she was immersed. Miknat Kesef Nimolechat. And purchased with money and circumcised on the first day, what case is that? Kegon Shalakat Zeshisa Veze Ubara. This is where one bought the slave woman. And this one, ooh, That's purchased the, by two people. Someone else. Whoa. Whoa. So you can actually say, you take the slave woman, and I'll take well, the, the fetus. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Mind you. It's still possible for the for the baby to grow up with the mother. Oh yeah. And maybe you know when the, it, the person who bought the mother can then rent her out to the purchaser of the fetus to feed it. And make, make an yeah, like an investment. There's a business here. Yeah. What? I don't want to know what. No, it's not Bible. Whatever. It is. Oh yes, it is. The business is Bible. Maybe, maybe. Did you follow exploitation? Go over it again. Go over it again. The uh, there's a slave, pregnant slave woman, and let's just say two Jewish guys. Yeah, two Jewish guys say to each other, "Let's buy her. You buy the mother, and I'll buy the fetus." Or, alternatively, when she's on the auction block, um, the the auction is for the mother and the fetus separately. Yeah. So then the person who bought the mother can then rent the mother out to the one who bought the fetus when it was delivered as um, This is such an eye opener. Can you imagine in 2000 years time and they're reading something about our daily lives and people say, that is such an eye opener. How they used to sit by the road and have coffee and study Torah. That is so disrespectful. <laughs> But one view is that they were doing a Torah. The other view is that they were doing a, in a mundane situation. Anyway, there are all the possibilities of gas. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Peter, for bringing some sanity to the um, conversation.
Tennessee. He just said that the Mashiach is coming now and we're going to have to do all these. Yeah, that was about five minutes ago. Eled Kulhu. You know, I don't understand why they don't just say, well, they said it. Just leave it at the fact, the fact of, I suppose that's, that's what they said. If she's tame, then it's an eight day, and if she's not tame, then it's one day. Full stop. And this is all explained to us how that could possibly be. Ella Latanakama. Bishlamakulhu Mashkachat Lehu. Sunspin, understand. Did I do this yet? No. It's understandable how all the other cases that are found. Ella, ye live beit ni mola, pathesi mashkachat la, but how is there to be found? Uh, a case of a slave woman who has to be circumcised on the first day. Ama Rabbi Yumia, Belokea Shisa Lobara, where the master buys a slave woman for the right to her fetus. Ah. He's not interested in the slave woman, just in the fetus. Hanisala Manda Ma Kinyan Perot Lav Kekinyan Haguf Dame. This is acceptable according to one who says ownership of the right to produce is not tantamount to the ownership of the essence of the property. So two separate things. However, according to one who says that ownership of the right to produce is tantamount to ownership of the essence, what is there to say? So they're looking at it separate ways. Like if the slave woman gives birth to a child, what's the property status of the of the fetus? Does it belong to the owner or not belong to the owner? Um Amarav Misharshia. So all of the reason they just Rabbi Imriya said that is simply to show us where it's another alternative of first day versus eighth day. Ah, this becomes But now Rav Meshashia gives us another possibility. Where a master buys a slave woman with the stipulation that he will not immerse her in a mikvah to convert her. So she can see and still go first. Uh, and uh, the whole point there is yeah. that you would get the child yeah. and you cannot own the woman. You're going to sell her off to a Gentile, because if she's not immersed, you as oh, you have a shown account. Obligations. Account. Oh. Nice one, Peter. So that's what's happening here. Sensational. Tanya, Lusoda Baraita, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel, Omer. Kol, that was an epiphany. Kol Shisha Hashloshim, Yom Yamen on FL. Any human newborn that survives for 30 days is not Suspectable, suspected of being a non-viable child, which is a double negative. Okay, that makes sense. Shemar ufe duyav mi ben kodesh kiste for the best state. Those that are to be redeemed, you shall redeem from the age of one month. Shmona, oh, that's a, um, what's that called? A, Pijon Haben. Shmona, Yamim, Bebehema, Eno Nefel. In contrast, eight days for an animal demonstrates, demonstrates that it's a non viable, it is not a non viable animal. So if an animal lives eight days, it is considered viable. Shnemar. So the verse says, from the eight day forward, it should be acceptable for an offering, etc. Halo shaha sekahabe. This implies if a child did not survive 30 days, it is an uncertain, it's considered uncertain. Memal mima. Nimhal hezi nahalinan lay. If so, 
pack can we circumcise any child on Shabbat? And that is a very interesting place to finish off. The interesting thing too is to think how things were listed to start off with um, Jewish babies. Then you move on to the babies of slaves, and which immediately leads on to what? The babies of animals. The descending order. Yes.